Merry Christmas. Thank you. I thought you were avoiding me. What gave you that idea? In the last six weeks, you've only been in my elevator once, and you didn't take off your hat. Well, as a matter of fact, I was rather hurt that night you stood me up. I don't blame you. It was unforgivable. I forgive you. Well, you shouldn't. You couldn't help yourself. I mean, when you're having a drink with one man, you can't suddenly walk out on him because you're having another date with another man. You did the only decent thing. I wouldn't be too sure. Just because I wear a uniform, that doesn't make me a Girl Scout. Hey folks, it's the blind guy here coming back at you with another good old movie recommendation. And boy, do we have a good one on this episode. This is 1960's The Apartment, starring Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine, Fred McMurray, and directed by the great Billy Wilder. So the screenplay also written by Billy Wilder and Diamond. And this is a good one. Uh, this is often considered to be one of the greatest movies of all time. It is one of the only tw- one of only 25 movies that were given to the Library of Congress to be kept in perpetuity because of its greatness. And so what's the movie about? Well, the movie's got a bit of a racy plot, given that it was made in 1960. Jack Lemmon plays an insurance employee, works for a large, I believe it's an insurance company, He's one of 30,000 employees, but because he's a bachelor, he has his own apartment and his higher ups at the company borrow his apartment from him in order to have extramarital flings and affairs with younger women. And he then uses that to climb the corporate ladder. And now I'm not so sure if he's intentionally doing that in order to advance or if that is just a bonus of his situation because a lot of it seems to be that his higher-ups are taking advantage of him because he is a pretty nice guy and and unwilling to say no. Uh, The plot thickens when he falls in love with an elevator operator played by Shirley MacLaine and that's all I'm going to tell you because then it starts twisting on you and turning and the strength of this movie really is the story. This is back when they knew how to use storytelling devices rather than just straight up telling you something they allow the audience to piece it together as the story progresses very excellently done and it uses that classic billy wilder cynicism in a few aspects of the movie but this is it's a very strong movie Um, i watched it with my parents my dad really enjoyed it my mom had two thoughts she was excited to see that shirley mclean was at one point young and cute And she also thought that the movie could have been told in a much shorter time period. Uh, Time frame, not period. No, time frame. And so the movie is two hours long. I think my mom felt like it was much longer than that. So if you need a movie that needs a lot going on in it, this might not be the movie for you. It almost has like a noir style to it at times. It's not a film noir, but the lighting itself is very noir-ish noir-esque uh, they use a lot of that great black and white look gives a lot of angles from the side using the lighting and it takes place around christmas time and new Year's, so it's a good movie to watch around then i wouldn't really say it's a christmas movie more than die hard but i wouldn't say that it actually is a christmas movie uh, some interesting facts about the movie it's based off of billy wilder's experience in hollywood he actually saw several elements of the movie taking place in hollywood And so he wanted to write a screenplay about that, but could not get away with it in the 1940s because of its racy subject matter. So then he tried again in 1960 and it was allowed. Now, the movie did have some criticism because of that from critics, but it was widely um, acclaimed when it did come out. And like I said, it's often considered one of the greatest movies of all time and definitely one of the greatest comedies of all time. It's a bit of a dramedy. It does have some darker elements to it. But it is, it's just an exceptionally well-made movie. Um, it is the last movie to win Best Picture from the black and white era. So Schindler's List and The Artist also both won Best Picture as black and white movies. But they were made black and white during the colored era where this movie was the last one of all the black and white movies to win Best Picture. 
Um, it's just, it uses a lot of forced perspective tricks with the camera angles and stuff to make the office buildings look larger. They wanted to make uh, Jack Lemmon's apartment seem smaller than most apartments. It's just, it's a really nice movie. I've seen it several times now, and every time I see it, I notice a few extra things. But I just think if you're a big movie, I know, buff or movie fan, I, I just think this has to be one that you see. It scores an 8.3 on IMDb. I'm not going to quibble with that. I might give it something closer just to the 8.0 range um, because it is, it's, it's a bit slower paced, but just has storytelling devices and the acting's great. Fred McMurray plays an unsavory character in this movie, and he said that he would never do that again after this one because women would actually come up to him and try to hit him with their purse and things like that. So he said after this movie, he uh, he couldn't do that anymore. Uh, Jack Lemmon, to me, was one of the first great uh, comedic physical actors. I realize there's guys like uh, the Marx Brothers and things like that, but but he's more of a serious actor at times, but he has a very physical comedic style to him and and billy wilder actually allowed him to ad-lib a few lines and improvise which is not always the case usually billy would require his actors to stay exactly on script and how he directed them but because he was such great friends with jack lim and he actually allowed jack to improvise a, improvise a bit so improvise that's a good word improvise uh, improvise a bit so those are my thoughts on 1960s the apartment Check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I just think this one, every time I see it, it's great. If you want to support the channel, you can by renting the movie in the description below. I think actually right now on Amazon Prime Time, as my mom would say, it is uh, for free right now. But if you use the link, it does help the channel out. If you want to sponsor an upcoming video, I have a sponsored one coming out, hopefully making it tomorrow. So hopefully it'll be out in the next few days. But if you want to sponsor one, shoot me an email using the email address in the description. And I just thank you guys so much for all your support. If you have any ideas in the comments, let me know. Things you want to see, let me know. Our channel is growing fairly quickly now, which is awesome. It's grown more in the last month than it did in the first year, believe it or not. And that's all because of you guys. So thank you so much. But those are my thoughts on 1960s The Apartment. And I'll see you on the other side. Laters on the Menjay. Laters on the Menjay.